In this one, we're asked to evaluate the integral by changing the spherical coordinates. We have the integral from negative 2 to 2 of the integral from negative root 4 minus x squared to root 4 minus x squared of the integral from 0 to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. The integrand is z times x squared plus y squared plus z squared dz dy dx. Spherical coordinates. Okay, let's start. with the integrand and the volume element. In fact, what is the volume what is the volume element changed to when you're in spherical? You got to include a couple extra factors. Row squared, row squared sine phi phi full form doesn't matter, right? d rho d phi d theta. The integrand becomes what's z? Rho cosine phi, just one of those things you got to memorize. And then what's x squared plus y squared plus z squared? It's rho squared. Then we have our extra rho squared from the extra factor in the in the volume element. So you, does everybody understand what I'm what I mean when I say the volume element? So this guy is the volume element, dz dy dx for rectangular. This whole thing is the volume element, little chunk of volume for a tiny little spherical box inside our region of integration, right? Okay, so uh, we've got that part. Now, uh, we have to come up with our limits of integration. So it, it breaks down to understanding what kind of surface these limits of integration describe. And I, I always like to start with the inner limits. So z lies between what? two values, zero and square root of four minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, z equals zero is just part of the xy plane, right? It, well, the z equals zero by itself, out of context, is the entire xy plane, right? What about z equals the other end? Yeah, well, technically it's half of a sphere. It's a hemisphere, isn't it? The top half of the hemisphere. How do you recognize that? Well, square both sides and put it in standard form. If you square both sides and add an x squared and y squared to both sides, you get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. So if you were to graph a whole sphere, it's kind of almost easier to graph an entire sphere. Almost got it. A little too flat right there but I'm going to erase that part anyway. So the hemisphere, you erase the bottom, at least the top half of the hemisphere, you erase the bottom part of the picture here. And um, are we going to, so, so out of context, z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared is, is that entire hemisphere. And so z is less than or equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared would be if you're staying uh, for, po for positive z, we're not talking about anything below the xy plane, that would represent the interior of that hemisphere, right? So uh, is our solid of integration going to be the entire interior of that? Well, that story will be told to you by the limits on the outer variables of integration, right? So think about it. If you project this guy down, um, so I'm, I'm still in rectangular coordinates in that sort of thinking. If you project uh, that hemisphere down, that surface down into the xy plane, don't you get a circle? In fact, if, if you set z equal to 0, you can tell exactly, well, let's do it here. You can tell exactly what the circle is. It's x squared plus y squared equals 4, right? And so my question to you is, are we going to integrate for the outer limits of integration? Are we going to integrate over that entire disk that we get, the circle and its interior? Well, I would say, yeah, because, well, just starting with um, the middle limits of integration, it goes from y goes from the bottom of the circle. I know that's the negative square root, right, of 4 minus x squared. So you solve this equation. For y, you get two roots, plus or minus 4 root 4 minus x squared. The plus gives you the top part of the circle. The, bo the bottom, the, the, the minus root gives you the bottom part of the circle, which correspond to the top and bottom limits of integration. And then um, 
If you actually draw this, the circle in the xy plane then, doesn't have to be a beautiful picture, but it's a circle of radius 2, right? And so uh, top half of the circle, square root of 4 minus x squared, that's, that's y equals. Bottom half of the circle, negative square root. And then these outer limits of integration tell you x goes from negative 2 to, to positive 2, right? That's the entire disk, isn't it? between the, the top and bottom roots, right? The, the positive root and the negative root. So that's telling me that the, in space, the region we're integrating over is the hemisphere and its interior. Okay, now we're ready to set up the limits of integration in spherical coordinates, now that we're sure. Think, uh, okay, zero, zero, zero is right here. In space, when we think radially, we think what is rho range between, right, in space? So what does rho range between? Drawn any kind of spoke in space. It goes from 0 to the radius of the sphere, which is 2. And then what does phi range from? Yeah, it, it goes from, it coincides with the z act. So you have to be able to scan, uh, you know, the taken in conjunction with how theta is being spun around. Phi has to be able to scan out the entire hemisphere. So it has to range from 0 coinciding with the z-axis to pi over 2 coinciding with really the xy plane, right? Lying in the xy plane. So 0 to pi halves. Does everybody buy that? And then theta is going to range from 0 to 2 pi. I, will I, I think I'll have you guys evaluate this, but I'll clean it up a little bit. 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to pi halves, integral 0 to 2, rho to the what power? 5. And then what, cosine phi, sine phi, did I forget anything? There's no function of theta here, is there? So d rho, d phi, d theta. Could you, could you bust this one up? Yeah, you, c you definitely could, right? What would the three integrals be? Integral 0 to 2 pi, what would the integrand of that be? 1 d theta, right? And then integral to pi over 2, what would, that, what would the integrand be there? That would be the, the functions of phi. So cosine phi, sine phi, and that's d phi. And then the integral with respect to rho, 0 to 2, rho to the fifth, d rho. So everybody buy that? And I think I will have you guys take it from there. It's not tough. How, I mean, the only one that might be a little bit tricky is the middle integral. This is just a product, right? Um, what could you use to integrate cosine phi, sine phi, d phi? A u substitution. Okay, now what would you let u be? Sorry, sine. You could. Now, could you let u be cosine? Yes, but it wouldn't be as easy as letting u be sine, right? because of the negative that you get when you take the derivative of cosine. So yeah, I would let u be sine, and then you have your perfect du, right? Yeah. If you pull a 2 off from the outside of that integral, and then have the phi sine phi take Well, the yeah, and then use the double angle identity. You could. Yeah. You have to remember to divide by 2, right? Yeah. If you pull a 2 out, yeah, because there's no 2 there, right? Yeah. So he's saying if you put a 2 in here, he's, get, he's, he's being a little bit of a smarty pants here. This is pretty good. <laughs> 2, multiply by 2, oh, and then you could replace this with sine of uh, 2 theta, or two, 2 feet, 2 feet, right? Uh, so he's using a trig identity. That's a good idea. But you know what? I, I, I don't think it's any faster, really, than just using u substitution. So either way is, is awesome. You know, I'd be happy. You do it either way, and you do it correctly, I'm happy.